Since it was introduced in 2020, there has been nothing but a cloud of confusion surrounding DoD contractors. From its soon-to-be mandated requirements to its headline-grabbing controversies, many contractors are left with no choice but to bombard the CMMCAB with questions during their monthly town hall meetings. The only problem is CMMCAB doesn't have enough resources to answer everything, and that's where we come in. Welcome to CMMC Unacknowledged, where we answer the unanswered questions that were asked during the monthly CMMCAB town hall meetings. My name is Todd Stanton. I'm the Regional Sales Manager for all things CMMC at eTactics. And as always, I'm joined by Ty Wittenberg. Ty is the Senior Information Assurance Manager at Rain Associates. Welcome, Ty. Hey, thanks, Todd. Thanks for having me back. All right. Our question for this episode is, can we get an acronym map that's specific to CMMC? So we've gone through, we've picked out those acronyms that we think are most commonly used uh, on the town hall meetings and in some of the documentation associated with CMMC. So we're going to try to do a lightning round with Ty, where we're going to give him the acronym. And he's going to tell us what it means. Are you ready, Ty? Uh, I, I, I think so. This, this is always like a challenge, like the alphabet soup. How much can you remember? <laughs> And I'm going to start with a tough one. I've got AAC, Alpha, Alpha, Charlie. So I believe that is uh, your Acquisition Advisory Council. Correct. The next one, Alpha, Bravo, AB. Oh, so that, whew, thank you. That was a little bit easier for me. Accreditation body. Uh, that's in the, the lingo for our ecosystem for CMMC. Now, I don't think this will come across right if I do the phonetic alphabet, so I'm just going to give you know what, what it's listed as, a C3PAO. That's a reference to Star Wars. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is your certified third-party assessor organization. Uh, these are the folks that uh, won't necessarily help you get ready for your CMMC, but will come out and say, yes, you are doing everything within the catalog of expectations and – uh, give you your certification that means you're accredited for three years. And the Star Wars character is actually what? C-3PO? C-3PO, that's right. The okay. golden lightning rod, as Han, uh, Han Solo called him. And does that stand for anything? <laughs> uh, I, I'm not that geeky. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. The next one we have was CCA, Charlie Charlie Alpha. So that is your certified cybersecurity maturity certification assessor. That's a mouthful. So a certified CMMC assessor? Is that Cer certified CMMC assessor? That's correct. Okay. And not to confuse them with a CCP, which is a professional, right? And the difference there being. So your professional is uh, probably a little bit of a step down, might not have as much experience in assessments may not have as many as cert, uh, certifications as well too um, but there's it's a different level of licensing as well too and and training and, and certification so just like an organization seeking certification has to pass uh, the different levels for the maturity an assessor has to be able to demonstrate not only um, uh, in knowledge but also an experience that uh, they are um, capable of assessing an organization through the professional ethics, right? Your professional um, is almost, because uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say an apprentice is the right word, right? But uh, they're the step below. They have a lot of the skill sets. They just may not have had as many repetitions. Uh, so what would you call it in the MBA, right? It, it would be the version of uh, uh, an assessor would be a, a LeBron uh, and uh, a journeyman, I guess you would call it. And then uh, 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 a pro uh, professional would be um, more of an a, a entry-level professional, like a, a LaMelo. <laughs> How about that? I thought you were going to say Steph Curry. Uh, no. Uh, I, 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 would, I would say Steph Curry is, uh, is an assessor, right? I know. He, I know. I'm just giving you a hurt. <laughs> And I think when we see CCA uh, actually come into the marketplace right now, we don't have any assessors that have been certified. We only have the provisional type, uh, but they will have a another number 
that will indicate what maturity level uh, they have been authorized to, to assess, right? So it will be CCA-1 would be a maturity level one assessor versus a CCA-3 would be a maturity level three assessor. Uh, but again, we don't have any of those currently. Uh, and CMMC, P or CCP would just be a single designation. There would be no numerical value. Um, sure. that, is, that is more of the apprenticeship to the, the assessor. So I think that's a, a great description. Yep. Let's try this next one. CI, Charlie India. Uh, CI, uh, isn't that um, something that the police use uh, as a confidant? Uh, no, I'm confidant just informant? That, <laughs> not, not in our sense. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, and so that's a bad joke. I apologize. Uh, that is a certified instructor. And you may have some CIs, uh, to your point, some confidential informants. You know, if, if you have people who recognize that, hey, we're not we're not actually doing the things that we say we're doing, right? Um, All right. That, that uh, but I, I think that determination or that uh, their uh, definition though is whistleblower. Yeah, exactly. All right. Not to be confused with CUI. Um, what does that stand for? So, you know, uh, I have a team member that hates when people call it CUI, uh, Controlled Unclassified Information. Um, so, yeah, that, that is information that's non-public, um, but is deemed uh, confidential to a, a process or a, a piece of equipment that is uh, important to the Department of Defense. Okay, and then we have CTI, Charlie Tango. India. Oh, look at that. Somebody's getting their phonetic alphabet down. I got Control. it up on my other screen. I know you're a military guy. I wasn't. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to speak your language, Ty. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You don't have to, though. You know, we <laughs> could even do it another way. But uh, your, uh, your Charlie Tango India is your controlled technical information. Uh, and that information it still falls under the family of controlled and classified information. But now we're talking about things like uh, computer-aided designs, technical documents. Um, CTI could also have additional levels based off of national security uh, that would have impact around if you need to have a secret or top secret clearance. All right. And then we have DIB, uh, which would be Delta India Bravo. It's funny. when Every time I see this, I think of NIB for like a fountain pen. Uh, but DIB is your defense industrial base, right? So that's all the organizations seeking certification from the prime to the uh, small manufacturer in, in your town or mine uh, that makes a unique piece of uh, 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 equipment for a sub or, um, uh, or a uh, launch pad for NASA. Um, your DIB are, are the companies that make up uh, organizations that provide products to the Department of Defense and the executive branch. And sometimes we see them referred to as the uh, the DSC, the, the Delta Sierra Charlie. Yeah. Right, the defense supply chain, exactly. Um, and, and that supply chain is made up of not only uh, organizations within the Department of Defense or Pentagon or executive branch seeking services, uh, but also uh, the, the private sector, uh, of and, and public sector for some degrees of corporations that provide those solutions, tools, or equipment uh, to uh, our government. All right, so we talked about CUI. How about uh, FCI, Foxtrot Charlie India? So, right, that's the, that's the price of admission for any organization wanting to do, do uh, business with the Department of Defense. So you're talking about federal contract information, oh, yeah. which really, you know, talks about the request for proposals or requests for quotes or expectations around uh, what uh, organizations would be providing to our government. All right. And the next two sound the same. So we're going to use the uh, phonetical alphabet to separate them. But we're going to start with LPP, uh, which would be Lima, Papa Papa. Yeah. Uh, so you down with LPP? Yeah, you know me. Uh, <laughs> that's your licensed partner uh, publisher. Uh, so, you know, they're creating um, uh, licensed material uh, specific to the CMMC and DOD ecosystem. Uh, and then I guess if, if we're going to use the phonetic alphabet, I'll jump ahead of you then, right? We're probably talking about the next one being your Lima Tango Papa, which is your licensed training provider, right? So these folks are helping organizations such as myself that are going through um, the process of wanting to become certified third-party assessor organizations. 
uh, train ourselves and certify our staff um, that we can be certified uh, CMMC professionals or certified CMMC assessors. Perfect. And you pronounce Papa. Is it Papa, not Papa? Like, did I mispronounce that? It is not Papa. So when, <laughs> okay. when, when, when you're communicating over your equipment in the military, you, you emphasize the Papa. Ah. Uh, yeah. You know, and I see the A, the second A is a little bit different than the first A in the, uh, the outfit that I'm looking at. So, I, hey, learn something new. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, so just so you know, uh, my first uh, my first role in, in the military was a 13 Papa, which was uh, a uh, tactical mission specialist uh, for multiple launch rocket systems. So that's why the overemphasis of the P the other side of the coin for that military occupational skill was a 13 Mike, uh, which was um, the person that uh, actually launched the rockets and, and drove the vehicle that was the mobile rocket launcher. Very good. Very good. All right. Getting down to the bottom list here. Now we're going to jump to the O. So we've got OSC, uh, which would be Oscar Sierra Charlie. Yep. So that's your organization seeking certification. Uh, some folks would add an additional C in there so that you know that the certification is CMMC. Uh, but an organization seeking certification is, is those uh, organizations that are part of the uh, defense industrial base that we talked about earlier, the companies, uh, both primary manufacturers and those uh, lower tiers or SMBs, small, medium businesses that help provide goods to the, uh, to the government. All right, we talked about CIs, so now we're going to talk about PIs, Papa, India. Yep, so, you know, now we're talking about provisional instructors. Um, you know, they haven't, uh, in order to put the SECO to system together, they had to get a group of skilled operators that were already doing assessments uh, for the Department of Defense uh, or for organizations seeking certification around FedRAMP or things of that nature. And so, uh, these provisional instructors, um, until there is the full-fledged certification, are a go-to resource uh, to help train um, organizations uh, around uh, being a registered provider organization or a provisional assessor. Okay. How about RP, Romeo Papa? Yeah, so that is me. I I'm a registered practitioner uh, in the CMMC ecosystem. Uh, I am not, uh, I shouldn't say I'm not capable, I'm not licensed to do a certified third-party assessment. Uh, I could be a member of a provisional team on that, but what I really focus in on is helping organizations get ready for the CMMC and build up that culture, that policy procedures, their system security plan to demonstrate that they are ready to achieve what, whichever maturity level they need in order to access uh, FCI or CUI. And you work for a RPO, which would be a Romeo, uh, Papa, Oscar? I sure do. So um, I helped register my firm, Ray and Associates, to be a registered provider organization uh, with a group of folks that provide assistance with IT, cybersecurity, um, auditing services to help an organization get ready for the CMMC uh, maturity certification expectations. And some of the things that you've done already uh, help organizations get their SPURS score, which is SPRS. What does that stand for? Yeah, so SPURS, we talked about this um, uh, before, which is tied to your NIST 800-171 self-assessment. Uh, that self-assessment for anybody that does business with the Department of Defense, they have to be able to upload their score into the procurement integrated environment, and it is a supplier performance risk system um, that accepts your risk score and allows uh, procurement managers and officers and organizations to determine where you're at in your cybersecurity and IT journey and safeguarding federal contract information, FCI, or controlled unclassified information, CUI. 100%. Was there anything that you thought I missed from an acronym standpoint uh, that, that's often talked about in CMMC? Uh, no, you know, I, I think we, uh, you know, we didn't hit on DIBCAC, which is an organization, even after you get an assessment, that could still come in. They are part of the Department of Defense. 
So that is your Defense Industrial Based Cybersecurity Assessment Center. Um, and so if, if you are considered moderate to high, you know, periodically they could come out and spot check you and confirm yeah. that uh, you are uh, still in compliance with your maturity uh, at any particular point, even though you may have been certified and the certification is good for three years, they are another, in, well, they, I wouldn't say independent. They are part of the DOD, but independent to ensure that uh, we are not falsifying uh, and, and that we're holding true to the standard to safeguard uh, the unique information that's not public um, around our uh, executive branch. Perfect. And you're right. I, I probably should have put them on this list. So, so great catch there. And hopefully, you know, for those out there that are just getting into CMMC and you're seeing these acronyms, hopefully that, that explanation about what each category is and, and what this stands for was helpful. So thank you, Ty. Oh, yeah, you're welcome.